So no sis and Gary, now from the Bronx, and I am a footballer. How do you find out about him, okay? Um, I had a lot of friends who went to MLK, older, they were older than me. And they always used to go to MLK. I actually all live in my building, but oh, wow. they graduated from MLK. Did you guys play ball together? Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I actually learned how to play soccer in the building. <laughs> I'm addicted to My name is Sanusi St. Gary and I play for Mahas Soccer Club Villa and next year I'm going to St. John's. I play center back or right back. So we got your check in the cage, did you just throw it right away or did you just throw it right away? Yeah, what about it? Center back. Center back. And then uh, did you guys win the championship that year? No, we actually won that year. Oh, so you came here as a loser? Yeah. <laughs> That was the second time in a row. Oh, yeah. First year I came, we lost, so that was like a really bad season. Like the team was just developing because like a lot of seniors had graduated, and they actually put a lot of pressure on me and the other center back. That was our first time playing together, so it was hard for us to like get that chemistry. But then the next year, the center back partner I played with MSC, he played with me in MLK, so it was very easy to adapt to, and we just dominated that season. And we had like a a great group of young kids, so it was like crazy. All the seniors that left were like amazing players. Like him, Rajon, DeAndre, all these guys. So how did the season go this year? It was a great season. This this team this team was like not as much talent as the my junior junior year. But like we actually played like a great as a team. Like we didn't we didn't lose any game so we played great as a team. How did your role change from last year to this year on the team? Uh, I was I was like the leader of the back line. I was like the captain of the team. And how do you feel about that? Do you do you feel that you confident when you talk to your teammates? Or? Yeah, I am because they all know me as like the guys who old guy who always scream in the back. Because so. <laughs> <laughs> if the striker makes a mistake up top and gives us the ball away so easily, it comes right back at me. So. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about your coach. Uh, obviously, he has a long um, history of success. Uh, was there a lot of pressure playing for him? Um, yes, it was my first year, but then I got over it because I was like, well, let me just play my game. And it was a lot of pressure because it was it was a lot of pressure because there was like other kids coming in. So if you're not playing well, then take you off the team and put you on the bench. So did you ever have experience on the bench since you've been at MLK? I had it once, but I actually started that game because they didn't realize that a player was not there. So <laughs> I actually started that game, but I never missed any game. Um, when I was younger, like when I used to go to pick up, they would be like, oh, you're too small, you can't play. Yeah. Because so, so, there was like really big people, so <laughs> I'd be like, no, nah, I want to play. That's how I got better. I started playing with older people mm -hmm. and like got the hang of the game. Like I could, I'm like, oh, I could. Man, man, manage up with them. So the first time I started playing in the hallway was when I used to have, like have trouble with Usman <laughs> and his brother. So I just kicked it over one time, and he just called me on the stage and he was like, "Oh, I thought he was about to hit me, but he didn't. He was like, oh, you want to play?" So I just started playing. Yeah, and he like taught me a lot. So he too, he like do like a couple of drills and stuff in the hallway. Yeah, in the hallway. Yeah. So did any neighbors complain? Eh? Yeah, every day. <laughs> Sometimes you even break the light, get out of here. The light, the window. Yeah, it works. So they break the So was that the same floor you live or? No, it was the floor below me. I live on the sixth and he lives on the fifth. Yeah, so the fifth floor was lit. Yeah, the fifth floor was lit. <laughs> Everybody used to come. What do you call it? We just we just yeah, we just go in the hallway and just play. Uh, that's what we call like run a barrel or something. Yeah. <laughs> we also used to play like a schoolyard like right across the street from our house. 
Oh, pages. Yeah, it was like it was like for uh, elementary school I used to go to. Yeah. And we just used to go there like the weekends when there's nobody over there. So then like, like a block above me, was, like there's a lot of kids who play soccer over there, so we just used to organize little games. So it wasn't no black versus black? I mean, we had that one time. We had like actually African countries. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we had like Guinea versus Liberia and stuff. <laughs> you're from Guinea, right? I'm from Liberia. Yeah, I'm Guinea. I mean, I say I'm more Liberian because I was born there. Okay. But I came here at a really young age, like two years old. So yeah. You came to America too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Who's who's getting it? my mom? Again, we get back. Hopefully, I'll go back right next time. So the World Cup, Nigeria playing versus Guinea, who do you root for? I don't know. So who wins that game? <laughs> Um, I knew I had a passage for when I went to MSC because I wasn't really taking it serious when I was younger. I was just playing as South Bronx United and once I went to MSC it all got serious. Like if I didn't play good I would not start so I had to up my game. So you get competitive nature. Yeah. How'd you get to MSC? How'd you hear about it? Um a lot of a lot of my friends like they actually play for MSC. They are older than me but yeah. they're the, actually the ones who like said oh you should go to MSC, you're good enough. So I went and I tried out and I got in the team. Like everybody around the city knows Manhattan Soccer Club. So if you play for Manhattan Soccer Club, especially Villa, everybody's gonna be like, oh, like, he's nice. Let's talk a little bit about your coach, Ray, and um, what he taught you and, and, and what he showed you about the game. Uh, speak a little bit about what he meant to you. Um, he means a lot. He helped me He he helped me develop my game. He's the one who turned me to a center back. And I appreciate that. And he told me how to be aggressive, Stand for tackles, don't miss. If you miss, is crucial. So, so when Snoosey came uh, to our team, I was, I, th I believe, it was 12, 13 years old around then. Um, you know, he was he was a good athlete. You know, a lot of quickness, a lot of, you know, uh, some good strength for a kid his age. He's small, he was wiry. He was just kind of stepping into a, a new environment. So I think there was a little bit of a transition. You know, kind of going from one team to another, and then having um, certain expectations from a coach that was pretty demanding on him. Ray is the one who actually developed me as a center back. Yeah. I was never playing center. I used to be a winger as a kid. Yeah. I grew up wanting to be a winger, <laughs> but I wasn't like really good. Like, you were like a waste, of, a waste of space out there. <laughs> Too good a defender to be in the wing. Yeah. I became a center back when one time I played center back in practice, and the game that weekend, the, the center back that I was supposed to play, he wasn't going to make it. So Ray tried me as center back, and I played great. and. After that, he just developed me as a center back. I thought the position really suited Sanusi well and his strengths. I always try to play the strengths of players. So he was able to read the game well. When you're playing center back, you know, I played center back as well. So you're able to see the play, you're able to anticipate. Those were his strengths. And he just kept on developing technically, um, athletically. Uh, his commitment was excellent in terms of coming to practice, working hard. Um, you never have to really worry about you know, the, the professionalism that he had. Yeah. So um, he just developed into a, a really great center back. He can really tackle. Yeah. Okay, he can make like the big play. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and uh, you know, those are the, and he's proven to be a winner. Were you mad at Coach I wasn't mad because before I wasn't started, and now oh, I was started. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, find your way. So same yeah. thing you don't have in college. You might end up playing left back, right yeah. back, don't matter. Just make that 11. Yeah, yeah. yeah. as long as I started, that was great. So, so what was the difference between playing uh, wing and center back? And what was your hardest adjustment? This positioning, like where I'm supposed to be at the right time. Yeah. So that was really hard for me at first. And like I having the ball, oh, that's yeah. still like hard. There's no heading. There's no heading in the hallway. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, practice everything. You learn now to fly. Yeah. Trust yeah. me. How you now heading the ball? Out. I'm not great, but I'm good at it. So I play with Sanusi a lot in my life, as you can tell. So what I can say is that he's like one of the best leaders I've ever played with. Like, he honestly, I, I'm all the way at striker and I can hear his voice just yelling at me, telling me what to do, giving me instructions, telling me where to be. Yeah. Even when I would drop down and play in the midfield, I can still hear his voice like, watch your back, watch your turn, all of that. He's always talking, he's so focal. Just like anything else, you have, you have you have um, leaders that are natural, mm -hmm. and then you have leaders that develop. Yeah. So I consider Sanusi as someone who's, if you meet him and you, uh, you have, you, he's pretty mild-mannered, yeah. he's pretty quiet, 
but I think as he became older, he became more of a vocal presence. Mm -hmm. I think once, I always say, when you communicate, you have to know what you're talking about, yeah. right? So once he felt he was really strong in his tactics and once he felt he was able to understand what everyone's supposed to do positionally, he was able to lead mm -hmm. that way, being the eyes that everybody had in the back. But more importantly, he's by example. Yeah. Showing up, determination, tackling, making the big play consistently, putting himself on the line all the time. Um, he's the type of guy I always say, you know, if you're going to go to war with somebody, you know, you want to bring Sanusi with you. So um, that's, that's the type of guy he is. I mean, I wasn't really thinking about college soccer at the time because I wasn't, I wasn't even focused on talking to other schools yeah. until, like, they started sending me emails. And, and one of my friends was like, well, get on that. Like, you got to get your college stuff, like, email coaches. It's Bach. He's the one who's like, your email coaches, you know, because he was already in the college process. Yeah. So he was like, oh, yeah, you got to get on that before, like, so you can get a full scholarship somewhere to a D great D1 school. Yeah. What do you see his future? How do you think he would do at St. John's? I mean, I love St. John's. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've been I've been a St. John's fan my whole life. Basketball, soccer. I've had friends that played on their '96 championship team. Uh, I love Dave Mazur. I speak to him all the time. I think he's the type of guy that gets the best out of you. Um, if you are able to perform with Dave and meet up to his expectations, you know, you got guys like Chris Winger, you know, Timmy Parker out there, uh, Jeff Mateo, who you may see to say, Jeff, what's up? So. Uh, you know, these are guys that went on to have some great careers. And, uh, you know, Sanusi has the right mentality. I think I call him a little bit old school mm -hmm. because he is so respectful when it comes to his coaches and he will do whatever they say. So I think he's the type of guy that would do great for Dave. And Dave is the right coach for him yeah. because Sanusi needs someone at the next level that, that could take him even further. And also working with Plus One, how long you been going there? I've been going there for like a half, half a year now. This is great. He gets you fit, he works on everything, body, everything a soccer player needs. Because he's also, he's not just like a, a fitness coach, he's also a soccer player. So yeah. he knows what you need for the aspect of the, every aspect of the game. We'll talk about Snoozy, he's one of them. Um, gifted footballer, and he's always been one to, to he was always better than the, than the block. What we're trying to do here is try and make them aim bigger, right? Aim higher think of themselves as a small fish in a big pond and want them to be a big fish in a big pond. Who do you think inspired you the most throughout your career? Um, it was uh, my dad because he was like take me everywhere. Yeah. Like if it was a match in like Maryland he would take me so yeah. he inspired me like because most of most of like the African parents not to be real or anything, but like they don't like take their kids like to their games and stuff. So he was like one of the only few. Wow. So I'm happy about that. He motivated me, inspired me. So I want to keep it up. What did he say when you told him you committed and got a full ride to St. John's? He was like, commit right on the spot. Man. <laughs> I called him. No I point. called him. <laughs> He's like, commit right on the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Before that chance goes somewhere else to another person. Like, if I'm being completely honest, I think he's like Mascherano. Because Mascherano's a short center back, but he's very aggressive and very calm in possession. He has a, and he's a leader, yeah. but he's so small, but you know he's there. He's small, but he has a big presence. So, he doesn't have the height that most like, coaches would be looking for, mm -hmm. the aerial presence and all of that, but he makes up for it with his tenacity, aggressiveness, everything. He just has everything else. So I think the biggest thing to tell Snoozy is, look, you're playing now against guys that are 21, 22 years old, maybe even older than that. Um, these are men. And I think the biggest adjustment for him is going to be a freshman playing against older guys, right? Uh, the physical demands of being a Division One soccer player. Um, not everything is linear. You're going to have some ups and downs. You have to have, you know, keep your blinders on and be very, very focused. But what I want him to be is also a positive person on the team. My name is Sanusi Sanjari and I play for St. John's University and you are now watching Footballer TV.